So I'm not feeling terribly well today, which is probably appropriate given that the history of the unending 20th century in Greece is uh, a history of betrayal, failure, and delusion. Um, I think the reason that it's worth studying uh, in Greece in particular is that Greece is uh, kind of a cartoon country politically, I think, because it's um, both in Europe and not, it's important and not, and because its bourgeoisie is really one of the dumbest, most uncultured in definitely in the entirety of Europe, probably on the entire planet. Um, and as a result, things are very crude in Greece. Um, things are very obvious. The mechanisms of history are exposed in a way that is not particularly Greek, but, but is actually quite universal because you can kind of see how things work without some of the baggage of history and culture. So this starts with the uh, Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century. Part of Greece is still Ottoman and kind of multicultural, multi-religious. And the left has to ask itself, do we believe in Marxist principles? Do we believe in internationalism? Or uh, do we want, you know, separate ethnic socialisms? And of course, the internationalists uh, fail to, to convince anyone, unfortunately. And it continues into Stalinism, where the big question is, do we believe in, you know, actual Marxist principles or do we believe in socialism in one country? And of course, once again, the classics, I should say, Marxist principles lose out. And there's a huge and heroic struggle in uh, the Greek uh, civil war and in World War II, which, of course, again, ends with absolute betrayal, first by the Allies, but then also by Stalin, because uh, Stalin did believe in socialism in one country, but that country was not Greece. And then after, you know, decades of quasi-dictatorship and actual dictatorship, and again, resistance to that and heroism and, and all kinds of wonderful things, we launch into the modern social democratic era, which really is kind of an accelerated social democratic decay, where you have two parties, the looters and the bureaucrats, and both are kind of already pretty quickly pushing the country towards uh, towards neoliberalism. Um, and eventually, of course, it is uh, the neoliberal social democrats who really uh, plunge the country into that. And the important thing here to keep in mind is that um, the first person to uh, sign away Greek sovereignty and threaten a referendum is not Tsipras but is in fact Papandreou. And Papandreou, if, you, if that name means something to you, if you've ever read Greek history, you'll notice is, is a familiar name because all the names are familiar. Because one thing you'll notice when studying this history is that the names in 2020 or 1990 or 1905 are the same names because again, everything is crude and cartoonish and the ruling class is just a bunch of ridiculous families. So eventually we end up with uh, Syriza, yet another social democratic party, really just by sock with a mask. And once again, we ask ourselves, you know, do we believe in our principles? Do we believe in our analysis, our Marxist analysis, that social democrats serve capital? Or do we go, well, you know, maybe we can push them to the left and it'll be fine somehow, just like it was fine all the previous times, except it wasn't. And you go, of course, through this, this tremendous period of incredibly crude, you know, blackmail and destruction by the European Union, where really you can see that all the ideological stuff is it's just nothing. Nothing is real except power and money. And it's incredibly transparent, I think, more than almost anywhere else in the world. Um, but then you see that that also applies to the left when the left sells out Greece uh, and becomes, you know, one of the most right-wing governments in, in, in its history and, and just annihilates the entire country. Um, and the important thing to take away from all of this is, I think, that um, it doesn't matter if you have a strong, beautiful left, because Greece does. It's all the things that everyone always fantasizes that they could have in England or America or, or anywhere. Greece has that. Um, it had all the good people and all the people dedicated to the struggle and all of these things, but when you make the wrong strategic choices, when your uh, actions don't match your analysis, none of it matters. And the fact is that Greek history proves the Marxist view of history right. And it also shows that if you can't base yourself on that analysis, then nothing you will do will have any significance or impact. And it'll all be this long, ridiculous tragedy.